What is going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the top of the map in the blue color playing as Zeus. His name is Gold Lion. His opponent today in the red color playing as Odin. His name is Odin King. This map looks to me like sheltered pass, but it's a very, very unique sheltered pass. My golly gosh, this is not a sheltered pass I've actually seen before. One giraffe spawn. Man, man, that's a tough one. That changes everything for the Zeus player. We'll talk about it a little bit later. This is the, um, the Oceanus division. We're going to be calling this in for the challenges, the challenges league, the group of death. Everyone in this, basically everyone in this group is, is an 1800 level player at the very least. They're all very, very, very strong. Uh, and it's going to be anyone's division in all honesty. Anyone can take this division. It's going to be up to some really, really high quality play in the end. We'll have to wait and see how it's all going to go, but very excited to see this, uh, this division and how it's all going to shape up and who's going to be able to stand up to the pressure. Uh, as the villagers finish up there on those giraffe, going to be moving on to the next location there. But now, Zeus versus Odin. Now, what is weird about this map? Why, why is this map weird? Why is one giraffe a weird spawn? Well, the answer is that the only other map that has... Th that there is no other map with this amount of low spawn. This isn't a water map. So you have like Midgard or Mirage have a potential of having only 300 hunt or zero hunt, right? But this map with 300 hunt doesn't exist. So players needing to have a, or wanting to have some sort of specific build order here they want to ex execute, they just don't have it. Uh, and what does this make? Why is this a problem here for Zeus? And why is, the, why, why is it a problem? Well, the reason it's a problem is that Zeus players want to leave villagers in their main base in the classical age so they don't have to have a considerable amount of walking time to move over to their secondary wood or, or onto their wood line right so having to walk all the way forward here and grab these right and start eating these rhinoceros is with all of their villages in the in the archaic age is a really really big commitment as we see a house coming down here for gold line. He has forgotten his house, unfortunately, here in a little bit of disarray here starting this game off. And the temple now going to start coming up. Definitely don't need both of his villages on that one. But we'll see how things are going to go. He might be going for Centaur here, Hermes style. Uh, Odin King here has got a back gold line. Playing as Odin here, having... I feel like he really wasted his um, his great hunt there on that, on that giraffe. You know that there's a pack of zebra somewhere. You know that there's... A, uh, a pack of rhinoceros. So you know at the very least you're going to be able to get 500 food from the rhinoceros. You're probably going to be able to get your full 750 food or 600 food from the from the zebra if you save it from that. And you've also got giraffe in the middle that you can get 600 food from as well. So I feel like Odin King kind of wasted his great hunt a little bit there. But he's now out on his secondary hunt. He's, uh, he hadn't, didn't have to walk too far. He's having a fun fun starting uh, starting point here. No weaknesses there for Odin, uh, given a 300 food start. As the Jason pumping out here for Gold Lion. It looks like Gold Lion's going to go for a, a slightly later advance time here than he otherwise would have liked for 45 or a 454 advance time. Seems to be... Well, he's, he's, late. he's late on the village because he was housed. Uh, seems to be the aim here for... Gold line, maybe a five minute advance time, very, very late. Now, if you do go for a late advance time here with Zeus, it's not game over. There is a build that was um, popularized back in like 2006 by uh, by a player called AOM King, one of the one of the best Zeus players kind of of all time, uh, and that was a 5:15 advance time. And the idea of this build was that uh, you can get yourself hand axe, pickaxe, husbandry. Uh, and get yourself two military academies and two archery academies out. So if you do end up finding yourself having a really, really bad early game, you can just throw down four military buildings straight away when you hit the classical age. And you just have to remember that your early game is less strong. So you have to wait a little bit to attack uh, to find any sort of advantage early. Uh, 
So you're basically aiming for kind of a later pressure point with that build. And we'll see if uh, if Goldline is going to go for something similar to that. If we take a look at his economic upgrades, it doesn't yet have anything. He, this is something I don't like. So one of the big, big reasons or big, big advantages of advancing late in a game is that you can afford to get your upgrades. And why do you want to get your upgrades? Because it gives you more resources. So if you can't spend them on anything else, you may as well get your upgrades. Because right now, having at the very least having husbandry, but pickaxe, hand axe right now could be afforded. We start seeing military buildings coming down, archery range, military academy, just the two. This is showing some inexperience from Gold Lion's behalf here. He's got a lot of resources in the bank he's going to be wanting to spend. Obviously, he could get himself out an extra Minotaur here, which he is going to be going for, uh, but definitely could be dropping more military buildings there as well as we do see the bolt there onto the Valkyrie. Odin King in his main base is getting himself out some raiding cavalry here. And we'll see how things are going to go as the Raven comes over here, sees the villagers. Forest fire gets dropped. Odin King... Seems like he's almost getting a villager kill there. He almost loses it. The villagers will have to move. They've got a forward spot over here. They've got a spot over here as well. No real problems where that's concerned. There's another military academy going to getting, be getting dropped there as well. So three military buildings here for Gold Lion. A little, bit, uh, a little bit on the low side of things. He has maybe a few too many villagers on the food here because he didn't want to pull back. So maybe a couple more. Maybe another military building wouldn't actually go astray or even a villager on favor to continue making... Um, to continue making Minotaurs there as the raiding cavalry coming through. You're going to start getting a little bit of damage here onto this Jason early as the units are starting to flow through. And Odin King now knows exactly what he's facing. There's not really a whole bunch of different options that he can be facing, but that's a lot of units out for Goldline. He's still floating resources here. He needs to make sure he stays on top of building his house. It's currently housed here with a, a villager here that will pop out, but he will definitely be needing a house very, very shortly. After that, Goldline will be able to move forward Grab these giraffe in the middle of the map as the units are coming through. It's 45 population for Gold Line, 50, 60 population for, for Odin King. He's spending his resources really, really well here in this game as the villagers simply move forward onto this granary here. Houses coming down now for, uh, for Gold Line as the walls coming up over here as well to prevent any sort of raids coming through. I love this play here. From Odin, uh, from Gold Lion. These walls preventing raids, grabbing the uh, the giraffe in the middle of the map here. This is going to be huge. Uh, two two raiding cavalry running around. This isn't going to be doing anything here, and they're actually going to get kind of caught out as the walls get shot up here. Uh, the raiding the raiding cavalry might be able to snipe down some units here or break down these walls here as they they do come through. But I like this play from uh, from Gold Lion. Just taking it slowly. There is a, a kind of a hard counter to taking it slowly for the zoo, for, for, from the perspective of the Odin King. If the Zeus play does take it slowly, it does mean that Odin King and Odin in general will be able to get themselves quite a bit of hunt out. But we do see that Odin King's decided he has to sit back in his base right now. All the pressure here is, is kind of mounted. He's made himself how many Hursa? Seven Hursa at this point. And, and basically now he's throwing up an armory and he's going to be looking to try and rush the next age here. He's got houses around his towers. He doesn't have any throwing axemen out just yet, which I think is a, a bit of a mistake. He has pulled basically every villager off of wood at this point as the raiding cavalry coming back in onto this position here. The villagers here will have to start fighting this one as, as Odin King does see a low HP villager snipes that one. The villagers turning around, taking this fight here as well as the raiding cavalry still searching around there in the main base of Gold Line. As Gold Line is now starting to move forward here, uh, the, the spidey senses are, are tingling as the units are going to start trying to bash down this watchtower in this position as the Hursa come through over here to try and defend this one. As the watchtowers getting some good damage done uh, onto the units here, and Gold Lion has to retreat back as the villagers here finally able to start getting back to work. As I mean, here's the thing: Gold Lion doesn't really need to be on this hunt right now. He could be over here, being completely safe with these walls. But I feel like being on this hunt is a good thing. Gold Lion, maybe just keep on throwing military buildings here. There's really only one play here for. For gold line he could try and get heroic age but i think the right play here for, for gold line is just to continue putting military buildings down continue to stay in the classical age and just put everything in 
to stopping this gold mine from getting grabbed. We see the hoplites scouting around trying to find where all the gold mines are. These two uh, raiding cavalry getting chased around by one lone hoplite. It's a good play there, in all honesty, as the house is still coming up. Gold line still not up to full population. It's nine minutes into the game here. Skadi has been clicked up by Odin King, and he's got himself about 600, 700 gold left in the gold mine there. So he should be able to get up to full population. But... Goldline still has restoration here. And so long as Goldline puts down some more military buildings, especially on this location, he should be able to prevent Odin, Odin King from getting a second gold mine. That's my prediction here. Now we'll see if it's going to uh, shape up or not as Odin King is getting himself medium infantry starting to make some throw and axemen, another longhouse coming down. Uh, his gold mine just about to expire. As the army has to come back and defend these pesky raiding cavalry yet again. Now, these raiding cavalry causing problems here for Goldline. One other option would be to just kind of move the villagers back over onto this gold mine here and move the gold mine villagers over onto the uh, onto the zebra here and just prevent those raids from, from being a problem. But he's uh, Goldline not really thinking about that just yet. And we still don't have any upgrades here for Goldline just yet. He could get himself his medium toxodes as the army starting to move out here a very risky move here from odin king is dropping a dropping a, a hill fort on this gold mine as the home gold mine just about expired here as the hoplites starting to rush through he wants to force a defensive frost here take this fight as soon as he possibly can as the toxodes starting to target down these units over here the hoplites come back onto this position to target down those raiding cavalry good micro there from gold line odin king's units here not really doing a whole lot at this moment here as the hersa coming in now you do have to remember the hersa get that upgrade immediately when they hit the a heroic age they start becoming basically heavy hersa if you were to apply that uh kind of any sort of similarity to them so these unupgraded hoplites versus heavy basically heavy infantry in terms of the hersa extra bonus hp uh but the gold mine is expired the units here of own king to start moving out onto this position here there's more units coming through and now is definitely a position where Gold line, he really does not need to care about this food anymore. Even losing those villages, not going to matter. He needs to... Wait, he does spot the villagers moving over onto that position. So now we will be seeing Gold Lion making it a maneuver up onto that top location here. Frost will have to be used. Rhyme coming through here for Odin King as his army starts moving in onto this position. We got the Frost does get dropped. The units here do manage to sneak out of this location. But is that a good thing or a bad thing as the dwarves here going to get targeted down we see medium infantry has come through gold line still hasn't gotten himself medium or he's got medium archers excuse me does he have an armory in his main base no armory it's one of the big big things you can do or even get sarissa here as another option uh the uh the Ath athena upgrade for hoplites to have extra hack armor is another option in this position but definitely an armory and thinking about medium uh not medium copper mail here as, as well and copper weapons to continue this fight is a good idea but gold lion now he's got restoration here the question is when does he use restoration can he pick off these thrum frost giants of odin king odin king's now full population he doesn't have the advantage of having uh huskal just yet so odin king his army still not going to be that good we do see the units retreating back there whoop well, i did not mean to click that uh i meant to click this we do have restoration i'm not wrong about that Gold Lion's just retreating. He needs to take these fights. Take these fights is... is is Why is he retreating? He's losing even more units here uh, as he does pull back. The military buildings are up. Plenty more military buildings as we do see the units here retreating through the walls as the goal, as the gatherers here getting pushed off of this rhinoceros here. Only getting fight. Not even getting any food out of that. Probably just that's decay as this ox cart gets caught out. And Gold Lion is going to try and continue to put raids onto this gold mine while... Uh, Odin King is kind of out of position here as the army here comes back in. He's got 109 population. Uh, Odin King here has got 108 population as the army engages a little bit early here. Gold Lion a little bit out of sorts as his army is not really ready here. He's taken a lot of losses at this point, giving Odin King a big, big opportunity to get sorted in this game. Not only that, giving him extra favor to boot to get more of these frost giants out as the army now starts moving through to take this fight here. Restoration is going to be having to get thrown down at some point here in the near future. Gold Lion is run out of gold here as his village is moving over onto this gold mine here. We do see the
the restoration coming in here. He used it so late, it's already down to 85 population. And Odin King is going to be able to get so much more damage done as the as one Frost Giant does get taken down. There's a handful of Toxodes over here. Goldline has got a little bit of favor in the bank here. His Odysseus is getting a lot of damage done onto those Frost Giants. Uh, Odin King dropping back here. He's now dropped down to 80 population at this point as Goldwine pushes forward. And we'll see if Odin King can make this work. It might seem like Odin King has got a significant advantage right now, but most of that advantage is simply just in Frost Giants here. As I mean, Goldwine's got so much food here. Imagine if he just chuck, chucked a bunch of villagers onto favor and he started making some, uh, some, some of those juicy... Juicy Minotaurs here to try and deal with the Frost Giants as well as the army to boot as the Dwarves getting pulled off. They're going to move over onto this uh, gold mine there as those Frost Giants still getting taken down. Population is still very, very equal at this point as the army is continuing to push in to each other here as those uh, Toxodes here, they need to get onto the Throne Axe when we still haven't seen any... Uh, any armory upgrades coming through for these uh, for this Zeus army or for this Norse army? So it's still a very very spicy game here. As the uh, the throwing at as Jason and, and the Odysseus, they need to target down these frost giants a little bit better because there's just so many useless, so much useless population here for Odin King as those units are getting frozen in place. Uh, and we do see the Theseus, though, or Jason, I should say, uh, getting a, a, a good amount of damage done here. Population is still kind of in favor, and this is exactly what Goldline needs to do. He needs to ignore the Frost Giants as best as he can with his army while taking out those uh, throwing axemen on the back here. Goldline is still sitting at a decent amount of population right now as the uh, as the villagers mining this gold as best as they possibly can here. The villagers finishing up on those giraffe can now move over here and eat this rhinoceros as well if they so choose. But Goldline here, he is still sitting at full population and Odin King has dropped down to 82 population and this is kind of what we were saying as we do see the army moving back over checking this gold mine making sure that Odin King hasn't snuck this one uh, at all but this will give Odin King a little bit of a uh, a little bit of time here to to get his army back out and the problem here is that Odin King hasn't gone for a hill fort and not having a hill fort means no Huskal which means that the Heroic Cage, while he does have Frost Giants, it's not that big of a help. It's really not that big of a help here. And it, not only that, we also see that Odin King has foolishly built farms, which is a really big resource investment, instead of just going into that full wood-based economy here at this point in the game. But we'll see if he's going to be able to win this fight here. Goldline microing his Toxodus to the best of his ability, trying to take out those Throne Axemen. There's the Odysseus here getting pushed back there. Uh, by the throwing axeman and everything else, we haven't, we don't have a Jason here either, which means those frost giants are going to be doing a lot of damage in this fight. But the army of Gold Lion seems to be just too strong at this point, as the Odysseus will get sniped down. There is one remaining frost giant here. Gold Lion is going to be able to advance to the next age relatively soon. He needs to get himself some heroes out as he does queue up the Jason and the Odysseus. You do not need to retreat from this army. I don't think Gold Lion realizes how far in front he is population wise. If you take a look at this army, there's like 11 units to. 20 well nearly 20 units here as gold lion is continuing to put more units forward uh potentially also here gold lion could cut villager production and go more so into the uh into the army uh kind of situation as he sees the gold staff potential here is very very possible as he retreats back we see the frost giant starting to move forward more military buildings up for odin king his quarry coming through as well for odin king opting in the quarry instead of trying to get himself uh, trying to get himself a fortress here. Very, very surprising. We see a sentry tower coming up on this position to try and be a little bit sneaky and hit this gold mine from afar. That will mean the gold mine needs to put a little bit more resources into getting watchtowers as well. Uh, but that's going to be a problem here for Odin King because this, this watchtower will secure the gold mine as a hill for it. He's now going to get queued up here. But will uh, Gold Lion be allowing this or not is the big question. Olympic Parentage is going to be coming in. Gold Lion will be able to go to the next stage very, very shortly here as the Watchtowers is coming through. Another wall going to be coming in onto this position here as the uh, Hoplites come through. The Toxode is going to try and take this one out. Odysseus coming through here as well. Gold Lion still doesn't have the gold to get to the, uh, to get to the Heroic Age here as the Hoplites 
facing up against those medium thrown axemen. There's the watchtower is going to be able to start taking down these villagers off of this position. Gold Lion's population still sitting nice and healthily, but he needs more military buildings, if you ask me, to continue this sort of a fight, as Odin King is still able to keep himself alive after all is said and done here. More villagers falling. The, the villager advantage is definitely in favor of Gold Lion at this point, and with the hill fort coming up, that means life is about to become very, very tough here for Gold Lion as the army pushes through here. Double towers are up on this position to try and hold on to this and, and, and push off this gold mine as the Hoplite's trying to take down the hill fort as fast as he possibly can at this point. Gold Lion is putting everything into this attack, but he just has not got himself enough military buildings and enough, enough gold income basically to support this kind of pressure. He's sitting at 105 or 115 population as the Frost Giants push through here, take down one of the walls over here, can continue to push in as the Hoplite's now going to return back onto this position here trying to take out the hill fort the throne axemen are in position to defend this as gold lion is doing a nice job defending it nonetheless the toxodes push forward trying to take out that ox cart though uh the ox cart does have 40 percent um pierce armor as a hill fort going to be staying alive for even longer gold lion could really be using some minotaur at this point as well but he just does not manage to to get in there and and finish Odin King off, and Odin King is still managing to fight. It's 51 villagers. Huskal is starting to come out, which means those Toxodes are going to be a very difficult unit to, to manage here as more military buildings coming up, trying to prevent this uh, hill fort from going down. Odin King could also use masons here if he so chose to try and keep that hill fort up for a little bit longer and cause some problems for, for, for Gold Lion. Gold Lion's still not in that next age. Another option here against the uh, against the Frost Giants, which I have seen work, is actually Mass Hydra, funnily enough. While the Frost Giants can freeze those Hydra, it means that they're kind of preoccupied in the fight and it allows your heroes to take them out while they're trying to deal with the the, the, scar, uh, the Hydra. And then the Hydra also really, really strong against the Norse army. Nonetheless, once those uh, Frost Giants start getting taken down. But Gold Lion, he's still not able to push in here and actually finish Odin King off. And Odin King, he's actually taking good trades here. He's about to get himself heavy infantry at this point as the Hill Fort is trying to get torn down yet again, staying alive at 500 HP basically there as the Frost Giants coming back through. Heavy Thrown Axe but now starting to be a relatively decent unit to trade against medium Toxodes here. Still no, uh, still no copper mail here for Gold Lion either as the Frost Giants still able to push through and Gold Lion is trying to put up some more towers here to hold on but he's just not able to get through Odin King's defenses in this game here as the throw and axeman able to take down the hoplites incredibly easily there's no real effort to kind of micro those huskal onto the toxodes here but doesn't really matter because gold lion he's got the population he's got the economy excuse me but he just does not have the production here he's only got himself five military buildings when basically if you think about how many villages it takes to support a, a military building uh it's 90 resources right so it's and it's every 14 seconds. So you're basically looking at somewhere between six and seven villages, a military building to support. So he's got 60 villages. So he should basically be having 10 military buildings out at this point, And he can support that much production coming through. As the army has to pull back for Gold Lion. Gold Lion is run out of food in this game. Oh no, he's run out of food completely. He doesn't have anything left to hunt here. So he has to build farms. And now he is well and truly stuck. Well and truly stuck in the classical age. As Odin King has managed to keep himself well and truly alive in this game. We'll see what he's going to go for. He's grabbing himself a town center now with just one throwing axeman. A hill fort up on this gold mine to secure that next gold mine, making sure that gold line can't grab that one. Gold line decided to go for a 21 minute uh, second town center here as well. While still in the classical age, obviously it's, it's going to take him a while to, uh, to sort this out. And for that entire time here, Odin King hasn't had plow. But he's also going to be getting himself Plow and Winter Harvest at the same time here, which means he's going to be getting a huge amount of economy to come in. As now the army's still taking this fight over here. Odin King's sitting in a very good position. He's got plenty of production here. 
Uh, there's plenty of military buildings are up. There's another hill fort as well, which means more and more Huskal are going to be able to come out here. Copper weapons coming through for Odin King as well, which would be a big, big help. Plenty of wood in the bank for him to spam down some more farms, potentially over there, as these villagers need to kind of maybe sort that out which, which wood line they're chopping here. As the market going to come down, there we go. Farms come up immediately on that location there as well, as Odin King going to be pulling back. Odin King, he's, he's in a commanding position here. You can see the score differential. That's a score differential in terms of kill loss, in terms of economy, in terms of tech. Every single metric in this game Apart from town centers, he's in front of. In town centers, he's just equal. As we do see, uh, Stray Yarl does come through here. It's going to get denied where that's concerned. As now the army comes back in, the dwarves do make, or the, the army of villagers do come over onto this gold mine. There is a slight weakness here, or another possibility for Gold Lion to win this game. One more, and that's going to be Odin King not starting a trade route, and this gold mine. Uh, expiring. Also, this town center being still a little bit difficult for uh, Odin King to grab is a, is a bit of a problem. But at this point here, Odin King is just going to be continuing to win these fights. Well, actually, at this point, he doesn't really have the population here, but we'll see if he's going to be able to win these fights nonetheless. Look at these Huskal. 10.4 damage, plus 100% bonus damage. So they're doing 20... 20 damage, nearly 21 damage against these Toxodes. Now, the Toxodes have got no hack armor, basically, at only 15%. So much damage that these Toxodes suffer. And they've got no HP as well to boot. So they basically just they just die so quickly to the Huskar. As Odin King deals with that army, but he's retreating back yet again as he's trying to throw down some more military buildings to get some more units out. Feeling like he needs a little bit more, uh, a little bit more economy here. Or not economy, but a little bit more stuff to boot. He's now starting to make the Odin Kings, uh, not the Odin Kings, the uh, the camel, the ox caravans for Odin King here are coming out. As Odin King now ready to start pushing forward. He's now 130, a 130 population. He could sneak like a Huskal or something over here to this town center to start building it up. We do see that Gold Lion is eating some berries on this position as well to help him out, but. You just see that Gold Lion, his army, he just cannot fight this. He's at 75 villages. This is something we've seen time and time again. Norse against Zeus. Norse gets the advantages in the Heroic Age. That's why Norse wants to rush Heroic Age against the Athena Rush. And then the Zeus player tries to get a gold staff. And then the, the Norse player just barely, barely holds on. And everything goes downhill from there. As the army pushes through, Gold Lion sitting at 92 of 130 population. I mean, there is a counter to this army, and that is Minotaur. You can build mass Minotaur here, but Gold Lion just does not have the population. He's trying to grab this town center as well, but I imagine... Oh, no, he's just going to allow the town center to go up. This is one of the one one of the weaknesses that I have seen from Odin King over the, over the, uh, the course of his tournament play here, uh, is that he, he kind of gets a little bit confused about what his win conditions are. Uh, and he gives his opponents chances. Like, there was a game I think he played against Antos where he had a, a very, very, very strong position, a winning position, and he, and he couldn't quite uh, convert that position into a, into, a, into a one game. We are seeing Tear coming through, which is a, a, pretty, uh, a pretty strong choice here. It's going to really hurt Gold Lion's economy even more. Gold Lion does have this gold mine over there as well as a gold mine over here. So he doesn't have a whole lot of stuff to worry about in terms of gold mines. And he now gets himself the third town center up as the villagers come through to try and shank down this hill fort. But I believe the hill fort will be getting up. And I don't think that the hill fort's going to fall here. I think that getting potentially also getting uh, masons here wouldn't be a bad idea either for Odin King uh, to help that hill fort stay alive. But he's not... Thinking about it, irrigation coming through the hill fort, getting closer and closer to falling. Gold lines at 95, 145 population. Town center coming up here as the gold mine just about to expire. He can move forward and grab this gold mine over here, but nearly all of the gold is kind of gone here on this map as these villages here are a little bit stuck at this point as well. So that's a lot of walls. <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, but Fimble Winter about to come through, and I imagine Gold Lion, once he gets hit with the Fimble Winter, might decide to uh, to tap out here in this game. Fimble Winter can be a pretty uh, pretty difficult thing to deal with. As you see the Mythic Age come through, Fimble Winter gets cast. 
This town center gets hit. This town center gets hit. This town center also gets hit. The gold villages, they are mining on this gold line over here, though. As Odin King is allowing that for the time being. As Wall's attempting to come back up through here as well. We see Ulfsark coming in with champion infantry. Odin King can also get Berserker Gang out straight away as well. Which makes the Ulfsark effectively just as good as a, a Hoplite. I mean, look at the... I mean, better than a Hoplite. 100 HP, 12.6 damage at this point. These Hoplites do 8.8 8 damage at 126 HP. These Ulfs are going to start tearing things up here. Bronze Mail Carpet is coming through for Odin King as well. He's getting all of his upgrades. Continuing to play really, really nicely. Gold Lion's, uh, Gold Lion's uh, food economy completely kaput there after that. Fimble Winter as the villagers coming over onto this gold mine. See the, the Gold Lion villagers mining gold on that position. And now the gold units... For, uh, for Odin King coming through as he completes his champion infantry. His units are so strong. Look at that. 189 HP Huskal. Absolutely insane. They've got more HP than the, than the Hoplite. They've got more damage than the Hoplite. They've almost got more armor than the Hoplite. They just such a stronger unit. You can, buy, you can win this army composition with pure Huskal and there's nothing that gold lion could do there as he does decide to tap out in that stage and odin king claims game number one it is a best of three series so gold lion's got a a, a couple more games here he can play to, to still win this series a very close game here if gold lion just put a little bit more pressure he, he went over to check this gold mine instead of going straight for the for this gold mine, making a mistake where that's concerned didn't quite know exactly where the gold was being gathered from uh, he could have won the game straight there, uh, straight then and there, if you ask me, but uh, couldn't quite make it work here. Also, simply just putting down some more military buildings or going in with some minotaurs here would have been another way forward here for Gold Lion, but he just could not make it work. Odin King wins. There was also another point where he retreated because he didn't have any heroes, but the army of Odin King was so small that he could have just kept fighting with those human units. Nonetheless, even if they don't trade amazingly against the, the Frost Giants, they, they still would have won that fight. But lots of different opportunities there for Gold Lion to win. They just couldn't make it work. Odin King gets the dub. If you guys enjoyed this game, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTube, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next game.